Hello everyone, welcome to the WVU Emergency Medicine Studios. This is Joe Minardi, your local ultrasound enthusiast, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about point-of-care ultrasound for skin and soft tissue infections or lesions. Hope to show you how ultrasound in patients with these presentations can help you be more accurate and make better decisions in just a few minutes at the bedside. So here are objectives for our CME purposes. I'm not going to read these to you, but essentially when should you use ultrasound, how to use it, how to recognize the findings, and how to incorporate that into clinical care. So as my typical, I like to start off with a few cases that later on illustrate how point of care ultrasound can help us. So our first case is a two month old, has a red lesion to the buttocks, vitals look pretty okay, a little bit febrile, but the patient doesn't look that bad. And looking at the skin, your first instinct is that this looks like cellulitis. And maybe just put them on antibiotics and let them go. But something tells you maybe you're not sure, maybe they've been on antibiotics for a couple days and it's still not getting better. So you decide you wanna go ahead and take a look with ultrasound. And this can have big implications in someone who's only two months old, right? They're not going to tolerate an incision and drainage very well, so that could be difficult. So some of the questions that come up in a case like this, should you just put them on antibiotics if they're not on them already? Should you try to aspirate this? Should you just do an IND? And if so, does that mean you're going to need sedation? If you're in the clinic at the urgent care, does that mean you need to send this patient away? All these things can be influenced and helped with ultrasound to better inform these decisions. So our next case calls me back to a case that I had as a resident one day. 35-year-old male presents with redness and pain to the groin. My attending said, why don't you go ahead and drain that thing? And I decided I was going to take a look with ultrasound and maybe we'll change our mind, maybe we won't. But let's take a look at that and see how that turns out later on. Next case, this is a 27-year-old male who presents with just some redness and swelling to their arm. And you're like, is this cellulitis? Is this a DVT? Is it something else? So you take a look and you get some information that maybe is going to help you out. This next one is a 48-year-old male who presents with redness to the groin area, just kind of red, swollen, patient doesn't look very toxic, but you decide, you know, maybe there's an abscess here, not really sure, so you're going to take a look and see if ultrasound can help you in this decision making. And then our last case here, a four-year-old male with a wound to the foot that's just not been healing. They've been on antibiotics, they've had multiple visits, it's just not getting better, and they're wondering if you can help them out, they want another opinion, and maybe ultrasound can help you with this case. Like we said, we're going to talk about skin and soft tissue infections, or I should say skin and soft tissue lesions, because some of these, you look at them and they turn out they're not infections at all. So here are the key points, and I'll hit these a few times. Point of care ultrasound improves your accuracy for skin and soft tissue infections or lesions. When you're scanning, you want to scan deeply down into the tissue from normal to normal, and you want to cover all the borders from side to side, other side to side, and deep borders. So make sure that you're deep enough. And you're looking mostly for fluid, but sometimes you're going to see things like air and other things like lymph nodes or masses or lesions. So be open to and kind of recognize what you're going to see when it's not just a soft tissue infection. And always, always, always apply color before you cut anything. Make sure that this is not a vascular structure before you stick a knife in it. So there is tons of data out there about ultrasound and how it helps us with skin and soft tissue infections. And it goes way back into the early 2000s and there's more and more meta-analyses and review articles. Essentially, our clinical evaluation is wrong somewhere between 10 to 50% of the time where we think maybe it's just cellulitis and it's an abscess or we think there's an abscess and it's just cellulitis or it's something else completely like a lymph node or some other lesion. Ultrasound has definitely been shown to decrease non-therapeutic incision and drainage procedures, which I don't know if you've ever done one of these. Back before I knew how to do ultrasound, I did a handful of incision and drainage procedures where there was no pus whatsoever and it's very disheartening you just put this patient through a lot of pain you suffered it took you a lot more time and you cut into this lesion and there's nothing there and it's very dissatisfying it makes you feel like a bad physician so this is not very fun at all and ultrasound can pretty much eliminate that from your practice definitely has eliminated this from my practice i haven't done a non-therapeutic incision and drainage in probably a decade also there's alternate diagnoses right lymph nodes maybe there's a phlebitis there's a hernia some other lesion and ultrasound just makes us more accurate at finding these and helps us pick up these things that we probably wouldn't otherwise identify. It's quick, it's easy, takes a lot of guesswork out of your clinical practice, and you're just gonna make better decisions if you incorporate this. So highly recommend you do it. And pretty much the indication's easy. Any soft tissue infection, redness, lesion, pain, especially if you're thinking about an IND, but there are plenty of instances in my life where a patient has pointed to an area and said, this area really hurts, and externally it looks okay. And I'll put my probe right where they have their finger pointing, and there you go, there's an abscess deep under the tissues without any overlying cellulitis. 
So any kind of skin lesion or lesion that the patient says hurts and you can't find an obvious reason on exam, stick the ultrasound probe on there and it's probably going to give you some extra information. If it turns out that it's normal, you don't see anything, then it gives you extra reassurance. Now for most of these things, they're going to be fairly superficial, so we're going to use the linear high frequency probe, but there are going to be some occasions where it's either a larger lesion, it's very deep, it's very wide, and you may break out the curvilinear probe in some scenarios just to get a bigger or wider view or a deeper view, but most of the time the linear probe is going to be what you want. And this one depends on where the lesion is. They're not going to be in any specific position, not like cardiac where you like them on their back or lying on their left. Just whatever position is comfortable and gives you kind of full access to the area of concern. Exposure is key, however, so make sure that area is fully exposed and you have full access to that area. I want to point out just a little bit about what some of these things look like. And if you haven't done a lot of ultrasound yet, this takes a little bit of practice, but just a little bit of practice will help your eyes get better at picking these things out. So normal soft tissues have pretty characteristic appearance. And one of the things I'll point out is you'll see pretty reasonable organization of the tissues and pretty well demarcated different tissues when you look at the abdomen or the extremities or wherever else you might be looking. And before I put the arrows up here, I just want to point out, so the normal dermis is very thin and it doesn't take up much space on the screen at all. And just under that is some sub-Q tissue. And you see the subcutaneous tissue, a darker shade of gray with just little tiny flecks of connective tissue in here. Then you'll see some nice fascial planes and you'll see this muscular tissue, which has more fascia, it's darker. You'll see little flecks of connective tissue, and when we turn long axis on it, we'll see more linear muscle striations, so to speak. And deeper down, we'll see things like bone, which are bright white and they shadow behind, especially if you increase the depth. So just point some arrows, the dermal layer, the sub-Q, the muscle, and then deep down here is the bone. And again, recognize pretty well demarcated, organized tissue structures and nice fascial planes. And then when we look at things like cellulitis, one of the first things we'll see with cellulitis is the dermis and the sub-Q kind of melt into each other. The tissue becomes brighter and the delineation between the dermis and the sub-Q gets blurred. If it doesn't involve the muscle, we'll still see things look pretty normal from the muscle down. So the dermal layer and the sub-Q layers become thick and echogenic, brighter, and we'll start to see a little bit of this cobblestoning appearance in the sub-Q, and we'll see some more examples of that. So this is normal, this is cellulitis. Now I will point out that any tissue edema can kind of look like this, so you have to take into account the clinical picture as well. But just a few more examples. Here we see nice cobblestoning in the tissue, in the subcutaneous tissue, and brightness increased brightness and blurring of the dermal and sub-Q layers. Same thing here where our tissue margins are all just kind of lost. Everything's kind of blurring together. It's a lot brighter. So this is what you might see in cellulitis, but again, may also see this in just some tissue edema for other reasons. If you see these, certainly there's nothing to cut here. Now I'll point out the kind of historical or what you'll typically see and what you'll see in a lot of textbooks is what I call the abscess prototype. And what I mean by that is these abscesses are kind of round with pretty good borders and you'll still see these sometimes but we see these less in the current days of community acquired and just MRSA that has spread around the rest of the world. If you see this that's great and we'll talk about the implications of the shape and size and the borders of these lesions. These were all cases that either me or my colleagues saw. All of these lesions were just thought to be cellulitis on physical exam until the probe was placed on them and we saw that there was actually fluid in these structures. So fluid is usually going to be black, but remember this is pus, right? Purulent fluid. It can have more proteinaceous material in there, so sometimes it can start to look a little bit gray. So don't always expect it to look black. One thing that will kind of be constant is if this is fluid, even if it's proteinaceous fluid, you will see what we call posterior acoustic enhancement. So that's where the ultrasound travels quickly through this fluid structure and makes things behind it look brighter. So you see here's this fluid pocket, things behind it are brighter. Same thing here, we see this fluid pocket and we see things get brighter behind it. Same thing here, fluid pocket, brighter behind it. That's posterior acoustic enhancement. Oftentimes we'll see a thick bright dermis over top of that, especially if there's overlying cellulitis. Now what community acquired MRSA and some of these more complex infections have done is these abscesses often don't look round and they don't take on those circular shapes and they often don't have great demarcated borders. So before I put some highlights up here, I'll just point these out. This is an abscess. It's 
a fluid pocket. It's irregular. It's not well circumscribed, so it might be difficult to recognize, number one, because if you're just looking for a round pocket, that's not what you're going to see. And then two, it looks pretty small, but one rule I've kind of tried to teach my residents over the years is however small it looks on ultrasound, it's probably bigger because ultrasound underestimates the size of these lesions because you're usually looking at it on ultrasound in only two dimensions and it's a three-dimensional pus pocket. So I'll usually say my general rule of thumb is that if you can see a fluid pocket on ultrasound, it's probably worth draining. There's a few occasions where I'll violate that rule, but generally, even little tiny fluid pockets like this, if you can see it on ultrasound, if it's a visible fluid pocket, there's more there than you think, and it's probably worth draining. Again here, this is a big, complex fluid pocket. So if you're just looking for a circular thing, you're going to be fooled, and you're going to miss this, and the patient's going to suffer. So complex abscesses are probably more the norm nowadays than they used to be. And I'll just put little highlights on here. These are abscesses, and you can also see evidence of overlying cellulitis with increased echogenicity and blurred tissue margins in the sub-Q overlying that abscess. This one's a good lesson to make sure you look deep enough, look deeper than you think, and we're going to follow these and trace through normal tissue, through the lesion to normal tissue again so we can see the full extent of what we're looking at. These are some that are just more complex, so I'll give you the honest truth on this one. This is one I missed earlier in my career because I was looking for a black pocket and I didn't realize that all this gray stuff was protonaceous, nasty, ugly pus. I also made the mistake of not looking deep enough, so I cut it off. I didn't realize that if I would have looked deeper, I would have seen this thing standing out in the rest of the tissue in this posterior acoustic enhancement behind it. So don't be fooled if things don't look black and if it has a lot of irregular borders. But this is all pus in a breast that I missed in my life, so don't make the same mistake I did. This is another one from an area of the buttocks in a child, I believe, where it's just complex. There's a lot of different loculations and layers to it. If you're not thorough and you don't look deep enough and you don't fan all the way through it or slide all the way through it, you might miss how large it is or how deep it is or how complex it is. Make sure you set your depth deeper than you think. Start at an area adjacent to the lesion where this tissue is normal go through the lesion and all the way to where tissue is normal again. Here's a finding that you may see, it's not always going to be there, but where you'll see the actual pus swirling around in this abscess pocket. And I just love the name that one of my colleagues on the internet coined for this and it's called pusostalsis. So and you can even just kind of squeeze or push down on it and see if you make it swirl and that'll help you give extra credence to the fact that there is fluid in this lesion. Another thing I want to point out and want you to recognize is when you see air in the tissue anywhere or air in an abscess, what I want you to remember, air is white. So these little white things are white bubbles and they cause streaking or shadows to be behind them. We'll see some over here. We see the little white bubbles in this abscess pocket. Now, if this is an open wound, then air is probably just coming in from the outside and that maybe isn't such a big deal because it's just an open wound with air in it. However, if there's no open wound and we see air in the tissue, now that's just raised the stakes of this possibly being a neck infection and our whole management strategy is going to be different. Recognize what air looks like. Air is white bubbles and will usually kind of rise to the surface or the highest point in the room. So these are a few more examples of air. So air is these white bubbles. If you're just looking for a black pocket, you would look at this and say, no black pocket, no abscess, here's some antibiotics, go home. And this patient probably would have died at home in the next 24 hours because you missed their necrotizing skin infection. Air is white bubbles and it causes streaking or shadowy artifact, but it's not usually these dark dark shadows, more streaks and gray, and just obscures everything behind it. This is another example. This is air, these are air bubbles, and everything is streaked out and kind of blurred behind it. So this may represent a necrotizing skin infection, and you definitely want to recognize this. Just a few more examples. This is from someone's groin. If I remember, this was a patient who looked pretty well, just looked like a kind of nondescript red lesion in the groin. Luckily, one of my colleagues placed the ultrasound probe and recognized all these bright white air bubbles and streaking artifacts. Same thing here, bright white air bubbles, streaking artifacts. This is a necrotizing skin infection that if you didn't already suspect or know about it, is drastically gonna change your plan and how you manage this patient. Depending on where you are, it may change. Can you keep this patient locally or do you need to send them away? And you definitely wanna be aggressive with your resuscitation, with your antibiotics, very broad. You wanna get a surgeon involved quickly. You may need more imaging, you may not, depending on the scenario, but you definitely wanna recognize this and ultrasound can accelerate your recognition of this disease process. So gas in the tissue, very critical that you recognize this. Just think of looking for white bubbles and streaking artifacts behind them. So just gonna repeat some of these key points. I always like to hammer 
hammer these things home. So point of care ultrasound is going to improve the accuracy for these skin and soft tissue infections or lesions. Always scan deeper than you think and go from normal tissue through the area of concern till you get to normal tissue again. And you want to recognize what does fluid look like, but you also want to recognize air and other findings that we're going to cover a little bit. And always, 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 before you cut into anything, put color on it and make sure it's not a vascular structure.